This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about this story and others I write. So let's get to it. 125. Battle. You're healed, Raziel. And you're stronger? Caden hadn't meant to make that sound like a question, but it was. I am stronger. Raziel turned its head this way and that, as if feeling that strength. My fellow dragons are with me. My mate is with me. Iolaire twittered and held its head up proudly. It was the mate of the black dragon, the mightiest dragon. That made it mighty, too. You've always been mighty, Iolaire. You resisted the behemoth. You didn't give in, Caden said, more proud twittering and a snort of frost of happiness. Caden, you should return to my lair and rejoin your body, Raziel commanded as it stretched newly recovered wings to either side. I, I need to see this, Caden objected flying straight up in the air to be even with Raziel's massive head. Foolish little dragon, have you not seen enough? We will return to you and share all that occurred once it is done, Raziel told him indulgently. But what if you need me? The moment those words left Caden's lips, he felt a fool. Yet when Raziel and Iolaire were alone, there was great danger. He could offer something, a distraction. But with all nine dragons, they didn't need his help at all. I mean, probably not, but still. You protected Iolaire and I, little dragon. We will never forget that, Raziel told him, and Caden's throat felt tight. You're making me cry again, Caden wiped away the tears. I hardly did anything. We should call you Little Waterfall then, Elderon cried happily. Little Waterfall, Little Waterfall, the golden dragon sang. Do not underestimate the power of water, Elderon. Scylla said dryly. Indeed, Lana nodded. We will drown the behemoth. We will boil him in a great sea. You will witness it. Now see, Raziel, I've got to witness the behemoth drown, Caden cried. Raziel closed its red eyes and chuckled. Iolaire nuzzled Caden's chest, but then gently pushed him towards the mountain. Iolaire, you'd have my back here, Caden frowned. Iolaire twittered and gently nudged him again. Safe. Want you safe. I'm safe with you, with all of you. Caden crossed his arms over his chest, feeling a bit like a child as he did so. Iolaire hooted in a gentle but firm manner that indicated Caden was to go home and be safe and wait for them. It would brook no argument. You almost don't look Raziel, Caden protested. Iolaire drew itself up to its full height. That only made it half as big as Raziel on a good day, if Caden were being generous. But the white dragon did a pretty good imitation of Raziel's stern expression and narrowed eyes. I might be a bit impressed here by your firmness, but I... Home. Safe. Please. Caden's shoulder slumped. It was the please that had deflated his defiance. But not all saw that yet. Zipple chuckled. You chose him, Eilair. You must like his stubbornness. Eilair twittered softly as it looked at Caden and gazed towards the mountain. Caden's shoulders slumped further. Okay, fine, I'll go. Just hurry, okay? I know how miserable it feels being without you, and I've only had you for a little while. I can only imagine how the others are feeling. There were uneasy glances amongst all the dragons. They clearly thought the same thing. He wondered specifically how Alarian was doing being mortal and weak again. This would likely cause the Green Dragon King to have yet another complex. He truly didn't need another complex, but it appeared he'd have earned this one. We must do this now. No more delay, Raziel said and flapped its mighty wings, lifting its massive form above the ground. The others did the same with Iolair rising last. Caden blacked his eyes with his right forearm and squinted as dust and dirt from the crater's rocky floor was thrown up by the force of those wings. He slowly began to fly backwards towards the mountain. Seeing he was moving in the right direction, if slowly, the dragon started off towards the behemoth. 
Caden could glimpse its bulk lying in the far distance. Some of the heads appeared to be doing something, bobbing up and down, almost like feeding, but on what Caden couldn't imagine. The whole crater was dead. His attention, though, quickly switched to the nine dragons that were flying in a V formation towards the behemoth. His mouth opened in awe. This was how they must have looked flying over the skies of Earth. Only Iolaire's presence was different. No wonder humanity gave up. I would if I saw that. Raziel and Iolaire flew together at the point of the V, with Mephis on the right and Zephira on the left. Each dragon seemed to glow with a different light. Red for Raziel, white for Iolaire, green for Mephis, golden orange for Zippel, and so on, each color similar to their main power. It was as if they were gathering their powers to attack. Caden stopped drifting back towards the mountain. The dragons looked strong, but Raziel had looked strong before. If something goes wrong here, I'm the only link they have with the material realm. If I leave, we won't know. He felt Iolaire's mind next to his. Iolaire, I'm not leaving, not yet. An alarm twitter was his response. The white head swung around towards him. I know, I'm worried too, which is why I'm going to stay. Out of the way, but still here, Caden insisted. Raziel's head was turning around. We need someone who can be a link with the material realm, and that's me since all of you are fighting, Caden quickly said. While he was talking, Caden flew around the edge of the crater, keeping low so that the thrown up rocks mostly obscured him. Eilair sent him an image of Raziel setting his butt on fire, herding Caden towards the mountain. Yeah, yeah, I know. Raziel's mad, but I'm right about staying. I promise I'll stay out of sight. He landed silently behind a large grouping of boulders that was just opposite the behemoth. He glanced up at the sky. The dragons were suddenly obscured. It just looked like there was a thundercloud drifting over the crater, casting a dark shadow. Zephyra's gift. Cool, Caden thought as he crouched down low. The behemoth will never see them coming. Caden grinned, but that grin turned to an O oh, of horror as he looked at their enemy and caught sight of what the behemoth was eating. It's eating itself. Oh, gross. Caden groaned and covered his mouth as his gorge wanted to rise up. The behemoth kept stuffing the heads into the opening that Iolaire had made in the big body and were ripping off hunks of that already split flesh. One head snapped at another head that tried to go in for a second helping before another could feed. That is just wrong. What is it doing? Caden swallowed thickly. But it was soon revealed to him. As a dragon's head ate the excess part of its form, it started to heal. The massive split began to shrink. The body became smaller, not that much smaller, but smaller. Oh man, that explains it then. But still, that's, that's sickening, Caden grimaced. He then said to Iolaire, watch out. The behemoth has healed itself and it looks pissed. In fact, the behemoth's heads were all looking around the crater and sniffing. A wind started to blow behind him towards the hydra. The nostrils of the main head flared. Those horrible yellow eyes narrowed, and the head turned in his direction. Oh, come on! Caden grimaced and crouched down lower. But another of the heads let out a roar. It was gazing up at the cloud that hovered menacingly above them. The main head's gaze jerked up and away from him. Now its eyes narrowed to slits as it glared at the cloud. Golden lightning crackled through it. Everin! Caden's fingers tightened on the rocks in front of him in excitement. Rain began to fall from the sky. Not just a little bit of it, but great gushes of it. Waterfalls of it. But it wasn't hitting Caden, it was just filling the crater. Caden blinked. The behemoth let out a roar as it picked up its feet like an angry cat in a bathtub as the water started to fill the crater's bottom. The hard, dry soil was not absorbing the water fast enough, and the amount of water that Scylla was somehow generating was impressive. Soon the crater was filled with enough water that it came up to the behemoth's shoulders. The wings were the one part of it that had not fully recovered, so it could not yet take flight, so it was stuck on the ground. But for how long? Suddenly the water began to bubble. The behemoth let out a cry of shocked pain and started moving at speed towards the edge of the crater in Caden's direction, trying to get out of the water. Boiling! Lana's doing her thing, Caden thought, even as he ducked really low and swiftly flew to the right, keeping out of sight until he found another safe spot to watch from. 
The water frothed. Waves started to form. The water was sucked up into high peaks of steaming liquid, causing the behemoth to flounder as it was slammed against dry ground, only to have the boiling water slam down again over its body. The water, though, wasn't really hot enough to burn it too badly, but the new skin seemed more sensitive than the old, and every time the boiling water washed over it, the behemoth was maddened. The head snapped at the water ineffectually, even as the big body tried to surge through the waves to get clear of it. But Mephes and Sephira were having none of that. Did you know that you can get some of my gay romance books for free? Every month, I have at least one book free to download right from Amazon, so you can easily read it on any device. But these books can only be free for five days at a time. If you don't want to miss out, just sign up for my mailing list, and I'll send you an email whenever there's a free book available. The link to the sign-up form is in the description down below. A green and silvery haze descended from the cloud that was streaked with golden lightning. It was heavier than the air and settled quickly to the bottom of the crater. Caden covered his mouth as he thought he smelled something bitter and acrid. His eyes stung and watered. He realized it must be a mixture of Mephis's poison breath and Sephira's scalding one. The behemoth's heads flailed, trying to rise above the green and silver mist to get clean air. Those wet, wounded wings flapped. The scalding steam ate through the thin webbing so they weren't able to lift the behemoth up, but they cleared the gas. One of the heads blasted it with wind tornadoes that sent the gas spiraling away, luckily not towards Caden. But the dragons were not done with their stealth attacks. As Behemoth lumbered towards the side of the crater again, fighting boiling waves, the dragons stopped with stealth. Zippel sent a ball of magma that struck the side of the crater, melting the stone and dirt, turning it into a boiling mass of molten rock. Another ball of magma, and another and another, struck the wall until the whole thing was turned into a sliding mass of burning liquid stone. The behemoth scrambled backwards, even as certain heads sent bursts of air and water to cool the scalding magma, but the stone slid around the behemoth's feet, imprisoning it even as it burned. The metal in the crater was suddenly crawling up the creature's legs and onto its wings like living tentacles. It bound the behemoth wings and slowly those limbs even further as it struggled. Go, Elderon! The behemoth's head snapped up to the cloud. Its other heads immediately sent waves of lightning up at it, trying to strike something within the cloud. But the golden lightning streaked down at the same moment, meeting the blue lightning in midair. There were terrific explosions. The lightning from both sides was canceled out. Caden was blinded and blinked rapidly. For a time, everything he saw was obscured by a black box that kept appearing and disappearing in his vision. The wind tornadoes rose up and stripped away the cloud from the cover around the dragons. The behemoth let out a scream of rage from many throats as it saw its enemies. Raziel's red eyes blazed down at it. The black dragon opened its maw and sent a massive stream, a red-gold hellfire streaming down on top of the behemoth. The behemoth could not move quickly enough to get out of the way. Its right wing was hit. Caden gasped as the wing was literally melted away. The behemoth's screams were so deafening and powerful that Caden fell to the ground and his ears rang for long moments. When Caden had clambered back up to look over the top of the boulders again, the air was full of tornadoes. Each of them were seeded with a ball of plasma. These whirling funnels had all the dragons scattering, leaving their tight V formation in order to avoid them. Ever encountered many of the lightning strikes, but some got through. One neared Scylla, but it banked at the last moment, and it streaked past the blue dragon. Another just brushed the edge of Lana's tail before the turquoise dragon snapped its tail out of the way. Unlike in the last encounter between just Raziel and the behemoth, where the behemoth was the only one that could constantly use magic. Now, all the dragons worked together. Unlike even the last time they had faced the behemoth, none were working alone. Mephis dive-bombed the behemoth using an acid breath of some sort that left the behemoth's skin blistered and bleeding. 
The green dragon raked its claws over the top of one of the behemoth's heads as it flew dangerously low, drawing blood that streamed down its neck. Mephis nearly got some toes bitten off, but Zipple had its back. Zipple sent a line of magma down that struck the biting head's throat, burning through it like butter in the sun. The head's eyes rolled back, and then the head slumped to the side, down and out. Mephis flew away with a throaty roar of triumph, while Zipple just shook its head in amusement. Raziel had flown in a large circle and now came in low like a stealth bomber. Red eyes narrowed to mere slits, its body suddenly wreathed in mist, hiding it from clear sight. The behemoth turned its acid breather head towards the approaching dangerous cloud and sent out a stream of acid. The wind breather head captured that acid in one of its gale force winds that raced towards Raziel even as the black dragon raced towards this wall of acid. But the remaining water was suddenly rising up from the crater's floor. It diluted the acid seemingly to a mild irritant, or so it seemed, by the way that Raziel cut through it without any reaction at all. Fire gushed from the black dragon's mouth and burned the nearest behemoth's head to a blackened stump. The neck remained upright for a moment before it collapsed to the side. Another down, only six more to go! Caden grinned and pounded his fists on the stone. They were winning. But as soon as he thought that, one of the lightning bolts struck Lana's right wing. The turquoise dragon screamed and spiraled down to the crater's floor. Lana landed with a terrible boom. The behemoth grinned. But when it tried to lumber towards the turquoise dragon, Zipple turned the ground in between them to magma. Alderaan paired with the red dragon and once more had metal tentacles crawling up the behemoth's body and wrapping around one of the heads that was poised to send a lightning bolt right towards the downed Lana, who was wobbling onto its feet. That tendril tightened. The lightning head jerked and its eyes widened in shock as the tendril tightened again and again and again as it cut through the head. It slid off and toppled onto the ground, followed thereafter by the stump. Yes! Go, guys! Mephis spiraled down again with claws outstretched to take out yet another head. The wind breather, though, turned right towards the green dragon, prepared to send two of those terrible tornadoes right at Mephis. But it was Iolara's turn. Just as the wind breather's mouth opened, it was sealed shut by a blast of ice. It flailed about, trying to break the ice, but Mephis was already there. The green dragon's claws closed around the frozen head and ripped it off. Blood fountained into the air. Great work, Iolair. Four more. You guys could do it. The white dragon twittered happily over their bond. It was proud. And Caden was proud, too, of Iolair, of all the dragons. They were working together, and because of that, even Lana had managed to get to its feet again. Zippel started shooting more magma down onto the ground, around the behemoth, until it was surrounded by the stuff. Zephira then sent a blast of scalding mist down, that blinded and irritated the creature. Dark green waves of poison flowed too, so that the behemoth was lost beneath a sea of mist and poison and fire. The heads could not rise up above it. They were blind. The dragons, all except Lana, encircled the behemoth. All of them hovered there, and one by one they sent their magic down upon the behemoth. Hellfire, ice, magma, acid, boiling water, golden lightning, and more turn that patch of the crater into a blackened mass. Cain got up on top of the boulder as the onslaught slowed, then stopped. All of them waited to see what remained when the smoke and mist cleared. It slowly did, and there on the ground, instead of one mangled body, were seven. Seven dragons, burned, bleeding, headless, seemingly beyond saving. Caden lifted off from the rocks and flew up between Raziel and Iolair. He put a hand to his mouth as he looked down upon what might have been the mates of the other dragons, but they had been imprisoned and turned into the enemy. We had no choice, Caden whispered. Yes, Raziel said. There was no way to get them out, Caden continued. No, Raziel agreed. Iolair, last time the behemoth was destroyed, you were freed. That'll happen again, right? Cain gestured to the fallen bodies. Eilert twittered softly that this seemed different. Something was wrong. Why was there no explosion? Zephira asked. Yeah, that's weird. 
There was a big one last time, Caden said, hence the crater. Maybe, maybe you really defeated it this time? So no explosion? But that didn't sit right with Caden. He realized then, if there had been an explosion, he had likely been way too close to where it would have taken place. Yes, foolish little dragon, Raziel said with narrowed eyes. Um, yeah, okay, so not the best idea I've had, but you could have needed me, Caden said defensively. Eiler twittered its love at him. There are only seven dragons here, Scylla pointed out. Yeah, wait, only seven? There should be eight with the behemoth, Caden cried. Then all the saliva dried up in his mouth. It's not here. The ugly bastard is not here. I mean, unless it's tiny. But no, no, it's head alone. Where is it? If it is not here, then there is only one place it can be, Zippel said. Caden's mouth opened as he understood. Earth. High reach. It's gone after Valerius and the others while we're here. I hope you're enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. Dragon's Reign is free for you to enjoy, but not free for us to make. There is a whole team working with me for audio editing, artwork, graphic design, and custom music. Most YouTube channels and podcasts have sponsors and take ads, but because of the kind of content we make, we can't run ads or get sponsors. Instead, we have other ways you can support me and the team behind this gay romance audiobook. One easy way is to buy or borrow my books from Amazon. They are all gay romance set in alternative worlds with vampires or shifters and other magical beings. You may not know that even if you borrow books with your Kindle Unlimited subscription at Amazon, they are free for you, but they still earn us money. The books are published under the name Ex Aratare, which actually means wraith in Romanian. And if you love audiobooks, you can get professionally narrated versions of every one of my books on audible.com. The link to my author page is in the description below, as well as to the first book of the series I think you'll really like. Thank you so much for your support. People like you enable me and the team to keep writing these stories of gay romance, magic, monsters, and true love, and producing this very fun podcast for everyone. Thank you.